So today what we're going to do is we're going to study the concept of multiplying binomials. So before we studied multiplying monomials, and monomials are just one term. So sometimes you have multiple terms, so we have to learn how to multiply those. So for example, let's take a look at question at this first problem here. We're going to use the distributive property to basically take the number 3 and hit every single term inside the bracket. So it's literally 3 times 4 minus 6. You could have done 4 minus 6 to get negative 2, but what we're going to do this time is we're going to take 3 and multiply 4 and then multiply 6, and we're going to get the following. And we end up with um, 3 times 4 is 12 minus 3 times 6 is 18 and that's minus 18 so now we do our final answer and we get negative 6 now you could have done this taken our original equation 3 simplified the original inside to get negative 2 which gives us negative 6 so both ways could have been done to solve this problem what we're going to do for our task today is we're going to continually use the distributive property to solve these problems. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can apply the distributive property to specific problems that I give to you, right? And for those of you that have, um, that would prefer to do it a different way, watch this video then go and see how I do an alternative way to do these problems. It'll literally take two minutes of your time. And you might find that easier than the way I do it here. So for this next problem, negative 5x times bracket x squared plus 7, we're going to do the same problem. We're going to do exactly what we did before. We multiply our term of negative 5x into everything inside that bracket. So I'm just going to put everything underneath here. So this means we have negative 5 times x squared. So well, there's no, there's no coefficient in front, so we'll just put negative 5. x times x squared is x cubed. And then negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. And then we have an x. And that's it. We're done. Now let's go over the concepts of monomials. Monomials means one term. And they are one unique term. Now if I have a binomial, there are two unique terms. When I talk about a trinomial, we would have three unique terms. So in this course, you'll have something like x squared You'll have an x squared and x and then a constant number like one two or three and that's how you would see a trinomial now a polynomial is anything four or more terms now let's move on to the rest of the work for today so now we're just going to zoom in on this problem here the distributive property can be used to multiply two binomials together. And let me show you how we do this. We are literally going to take the first term in the first bracket, and we're going to multiply it with everything in the second bracket. Now, when you do that, you're going to get the following. 2 times x, 2x times x is 2x squared. And then we get 2x times 1, which is just plus 2x. Now, the second half of the equation is to go and do the multiplication of the stuff from the second term in the first bracket times everything in the second. So now we end up with 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times plus 1 is plus 3. 
the next thing that we have to do is we have to take these terms in the middle and add them together. So now we're going to get, well, our final answer is going to be 2x squared. 2x plus 3x is 5x. Because they are like terms, we add them, we collect them. And then plus 3 as our final answer, and we are done. That's how you do what we call expand. And then this part here where we bring our information together, the center terms together, we call that simplify. Now, I'll take a moment and copy that down. I think what I'm going to do is, when we move on to the next thing, I'm going to give you the opportunity to see a way to solve a problem without doing this FOIL method. But I'm going to give you both solutions so you have them, and then you can use whichever method you choose when you're solving my problems today. Now, just take a moment and copy that down, and then we'll move on to our problem of the day. So, here we go. So, the basic problems for today are all based on this thing called the FOIL, right? FOIL can be done in two ways. FOIL stands for first in, outside, inside, and last. And I'll explain to you where that comes from. So, we say first, outside, inside, last. So, this is what I use this for. When I say first, I'm talking about the first term has to make contact with everything in the, in the outside of our problems, right? So, that's what we're talking about. We're taking the x and multiplying it into 3x and positive 4. So you're going to get the following. So x times 3x is going to be 3, because there's nothing in front of the x, but there is a 3 co coefficient in front. And then x times x really means x to the 1 times x to the 1, which is variable x, but then we add the two exponents, so we get x squared. So now let's continue. So now we get x times positive 4 is going to be plus 4x. It's just like what we were practicing before. Now, this last part, the inside and the last, is talking about the inside term of the first bracket, and then we're going to hit it with everything in the last bracket. So this means we have negative 2 times 3x gives us negative 6. And since there's no x on the first term, but there is an x on the second term, we've got to bring it over. So we've got 6x. And then we have negative 2 times positive 4, which would give us, well, it's a negative, but then now we just go 2 times 4, which gives us negative 8. And now we go about collecting our like terms. So we have 3x squared, and our middle terms are always brought together. So now we have minus 2x, because we have 4 minus 6 gives us 2x, and then we have minus 8. And that's it. Our solution is done. That's basically what we're doing all day today. Now, let me give you an alternative method. I call it Napier's, Napier's method. So, you remember that when we studied our monomials, before we talked about how we could group them, right? So imagine I've got x minus 2 and I'm going to multiply 3x plus 4. So here's what I imagine. I have like a box and my box has my box on the top my box on the top will have 3x plus 4. Now, and going along the left side here is our first val our first thing. So we're going to have x and minus 2. So what we have to do now is we're going to take this box and we're going to split up each of the terms. And we have this nice box with four quadrants. 
And you'll notice that I organized them from X down to the constant. So when you do that, you can individually assign each of the multiplications and then we can do something with them. So here we go. Let's do that. So now if I have X times 3X, this means I have 3X squared. And then if I have X times plus 4, that means I have plus 4X. And then if I have, so now I'm going to the next row, negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. And then we have negative 2 times positive 4 gives us negative 8. Now, when you finish your final, prob your final problem, all you're going to do is write underneath what your final answer is. And when we do that, here is what you're literally going to do. You're going to start from the, the top left corner and you're going to add up the stuff that's in the diagonal. So in this case, my first diagonal here is 3x squared. Okay, so now I've got 3x squared. Now, the next thing that you have to do is you're going to add up all the stuff in the diagonal, in the middle diagonal. So you're going to get 4x plus negative 6x is going to be, well, isn't that just negative 2x? And then we just add up all the final diagonal, which is just negative 8. And guess what? We're done. And we end up with exactly the same the, exactly the same solution. Now, some of you guys like this visual way. And I have no problem allowing you to do that on a test. Just make sure that when you're doing your expansions, you have it to the side and then you go, you show me that work on the side and then give me the final answer after you've completed it. Okay, so... There we go. I'm done there. That's your alternate way of doing your multiplication. So now let's go on to the rest of the lesson. Okay, so now here is example three. So example three has these problems here. So we're going to go and take negative three and multiply by this whole thing here. So now what you need to do is you need to think of this as, imagine it was like negative 3 times 2 times 5. What you would have done is you would have multiplied 3 times 2 and then multiplied by 5. So we would do the same thing for this package of stuff here. So why don't we do the same for this? So if I want to multiply this problem out, right? I could either multiply 3 times everything in the first bracket or, th or 3 times everything in the second bracket or what I could do is I could multiply all of this together and then multiply the 3 into the rest of it. So anytime you see a problem like this, I want you to do that. So let's focus on this and do that problem. So now when we do FOIL for this problem, we're going to leave the 3 outside first, the negative 3, and then we're going to multiply the result of the inside. So let's take a moment and use Napier's method, and then we'll go back and do FOIL method. So for the right half of my box, I'm going to have 2x and then minus 4. For the top half of my box, I'm going to have 8x and minus 6. So what I've got is four possibilities for our multiplication, right? So 8, 8x times 2x, so we're going to times those two. So 8x times 2x is 16x. 2x times negative 6 is going to be negative 12x. And then negative 4 times negative, negative 4 times 8 is negative 32x. And now negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 12x.
24. So just like before, I always said that with these boxes, oh, that should be x squared. With these boxes, we have to add up along the diagonal. So for the first diagonal, we're going to get 16x squared. So now if I compare that to what we did with our original foil, it would be 2x times this and then 2x times that. So we got 2x times 8x is 16x squared. So now we got our 16x squared. Now for the next part, we have 2x times negative 6. So now that is going to give us minus 12x. And we got that right here when we were going through this box. And now we're going to go and figure out what this next box is. So now we've got the second half. So we're going to do this times this, and then this times this. So negative 4 times 8x is going to be negative 32x. Boom. So when we multiply, we get negative 32x. And now, with our negative 4 times negative 6, we're going to get negative 24, which is in this box here. So we get positive 24. Now, you could have done this entire box as a practice, as a rough on the right side of our calculations, and then put the resultant line, which would be just this, negative 3, 16x squared. And remember, you have to add up all of these things in the diagonal for our x's. So basically what we're going to get is uh, negative 12 minus 32 is going to be negative 44x plus 24. And so now once we've got that simplified bracket, now we're going to take everything that's outside and bring it in by passing it on to each one of these terms. And once we've distributed the 3 inside, we get negative 48x squared plus 132x minus 72. And we're done. Now, you see how we can use the Napier method to get our work together? Or we could do the FOIL method. It's up to you. The final solution is always going to be the same for both. All right, let's move on to the last question of the day. I will not give you something so egregious, so difficult to work with, but just watch how I do the solution. All right, so the first bracket that we have here is exactly the way we did before because we just have x's. Now, um, the second block of work that we have here, I'll just highlight it for you. This part here have x's and y's. Always when you're multiplying mixtures of x's and y's, always make sure that the work that you're doing has the x first, then the y. So in this case, we have 2x times 4x and then times 3y. And then when we multiplied, we got 2x times 3y gives us the plus 6xy. That's exactly to be expected. So now when we do the rest of this, let's say the y times this and then the y times that. So the minus y times 4x is, 4x is going to be negative 4xy. And then we get exactly what we expect with negative y times plus 3y gives us negative 3y squared, which is exactly what we expect. So now let's collect the like terms for each of the terms inside. Okay, so now you're going to get equals 2x times the following. x squared plus 4x minus 21. And then minus, we notice we're still leaving this stuff in brackets. We leave the stuff in brackets until we have nothing more to do. So in this case, we're going to have 8x squared plus 2xy minus 3y squared. So now that we have got this, this is the next stage where we're going to drop the brackets. So 
since there's nothing, there's no other um, operations in front of this part here, we're going to apply it to everything inside here and drop the brackets right away. So we're going to get, well, 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 42x. So we drop the bracket right away. Now, this portion here, we've simplified it completely. Can't do anything more with it. So now we can just drop the bracket. So if I have a minus in front, all I do is flip the signs inside the bracket. So I get 8x minus 8x squared minus 2xy uh, plus 3y squared. So now all we have to do is rearrange this from highest power to lowest power. So the highest powered thing in here is going to be 2x cubed. So you'll notice that I'll cross this off. Now the next highest power is anything that deals with x squareds right or y squareds but also notice this I have x and y so this is really x to the 1 y to the 1 so the overall power of this thing is squared because you just add the two exponents in that case so so now 8x squared minus 8x squared is well I'm just gonna write 0x squared plus 0x squared and now let's continue with the rest of this so the next thing that we're going to find along here is our, our xy. So now we're going to put our xy's as next. So we're going to get negative 2xy, and we're going to make sure that we cross that off as we get it done. And then our next thing is going to be, okay, so there is an x left here and a y squared. So I'm going to do the y squared first. So go plus 3y, cross it off, and then I'm left with 42x minus 42x, and we're done. And so now pause that, take a moment, take a look at your work, and do the problems that you see for 4.1b.